for a job as a, a window dresser, but that had gone. But there were so many other jobs in those days that he was offered a, a job as a trainee electrician. And he worked there for about a year before they went to Hamburg, which of course is where they really got the act together because in Hamburg they had to play all the hours of the night and days of the week, so they got the act together. You've been to Hamburg, have you, Jane? You've been to Hamburg, have you? No. Not yet. She's on her way. I haven't been there either. Not this trip, though. Now we're coming back onto Lime Street. The Beatles sang the song Maggie May. The ladies of Lime Street have moved their patch now, but we're on Lime Street. Never walk down Lime Street anymore. Wasn't that, uh, according to your book there, it's a, that was a throwaway that they rummaged through, uh, they rummaged through the archives to pick up and it was kind of like a nursery rhyme or something. Yes. Yeah, like I never knew that until I read that yes, in the book. It's a song that's been sung for decades in, in Liverpool. That was exciting when I read that. Let know when you're ready to tell us something again so I can tell us that though. Right. Um, well, I'm going to stop up by the registry office, so I'll stop and do it in situ. Is that umbrella troubling you? It's pleasant. Uh, which is where John married Cynthia, first wife, 23rd of August, 62. Uh, very small wedding, John and Cynthia there, of course, Cynthia's brother and his wife, Brian Epstein, the manager, he paid for everything, and Paul and George. Ringo absent. He, was, he wasn't invited. He'd only joined the group the week before. No, and they weren't sure that he'd keep quiet about John getting married, or more so that Cynthia was pregnant. Uh, the shame of it at the time. They could hardly, they could hardly hear the words of the ceremony because they were digging the road outside with a pneumatic drill. And after the ceremony, they went down the, into the town to Reese's restaurant. And they had the ordinary shoppers' lunch, which cost twelve shillings and sixpence. That's about sixty-two pence in new money. And they had soup, chicken and chips, and very British trifle. John's parents also got married here, 3rd of December, 38, but it's no longer a registry, of, registry office today, so no quick weddings today, I'm afraid. 60... Married, married. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking for one to marry. I'm looking for one for one to lease for a short amount of time. Oh, dear. What do we do with him? You have to have commitment, Eric. Give me a big Commit. kiss. That'll work. You have to have commitment. 64 Mount Pleasant. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Epstein was born at number four, a nursing home. Um, it's just set back on the right hand side. His family had more money than the Beatles' family, so they could afford ni private nursing home treatment. Two of the Beatles born at home, two in maternity hospitals. Say if this is too drafty for you in the back. So. Beautiful weather. On the left, <laughs> on the left, the Roman Catholic Cathedral. You get a better view of that in a moment. Uh, known locally as the Mersey Funnel, Paddy's Wigwam, or the Pope's Lodge. But we're moving into the. Get you next time. We're moving into the maternity hospital where John was born, 9th of October, 1940. Uh, John tried to tell us the bombs were dropping the night he was born, but in fact there's no record of an air raid on Liverpool that night. John had everybody fooled, as he did in many ways. We don't know which room he was born in. He wasn't famous then. Uh, quite a few of the books have Aunt Mimi being telephoned at home and then running to the hospital, but I'm convinced she was at the hospital, saw John when he was about 20 minutes old, and then she ran all the way from here uh, to the family home to tell the rest of the family about the birth of this beautiful boy, John Winston Lennon. Winston so, after Winston Churchill, eh? That's right, yes, because of course if we were in wartime then and he was our wartime prime minister. So Liverpool Maternity Hospital, known locally as Oxford Street. All these newer buildings ahead and right are post John's birth, but um, he was born in this one on the left. We had six tuplets born here eight years ago. Six little girls. Have you got any family, Jane? Mm -hmm. Have you got any family? Yes, we have two sons. 
Mm -hmm. 24, 22. Mm -hmm. They're Yale students, eh? Are they Beetle mad? Or oh, fed up with it? All. Not at all. <laughs> I hate them. Had too much of a fill of it, oh, have they? <laughs> I think that's all their mother thinks. Yes. Well, the younger generation. Beetle drinks Beetle. Oh. Mm. No, it's a, you know, it's not a thing, again, that the younger generation aren't into. I mean, uh, that article that you've got, I mean, he came to Liverpool because of his 13-year-old daughter. She's an um, enormous Beatle fan. Right, right. Yeah, you met her. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you should have Oh, yes, yeah, she came round. With me, yes. She was excited. Oh, so, super nice kid. How long ago was that, then? A couple months ago? February, February. February. Mm -hmm. She said February, she's coming back with her kids. Mm -hmm. Here's the Roman Catholic Cathedral. Colours inside, lovely. Oh, Here she'll be back before she has come. Uh, we did. I already did. Yes, you did. With Hillary. Yes. yes. Mm. The Everyman Theatre on the left here is where we've had two plays about the Beatles. We've had local writer Willie Ross's play, John Ford, and John Bird. Japan has the largest Beatle fan club in the world. Sorry, what was I saying? Uh, John Paul George Ringo and Bert here was um, by, Will, by Willie Russell. Do you know his Education Rita, Blood Brothers or Shirley Valentine? Very popular plays in this country and have been shown in many other parts of the world. And then 11 years ago we had the play Lennon, where the young boy from the Paul Mark McGann played the young John Lennon. He looks like John, sounds like John. And he was in the American production, John and Yoko, A Love Story. Have you seen that one? <laughs> I've got a Not too copy of it. So the, the Everyman Theatre, and in fact, the Beatles would come here as uh, youngsters, as teenagers, to poetry readings that we had on Sunday nights in their uh, youthful days. Okay, you're struggling, are you? Did you take a video last time, Jane? Mm. But, um, really hurt my foot bad when I was here last time. Chasing Paul. Oh, dear. But I caught him at the end of it, but I have hobbled ever since. Mm. And I couldn't get out of the car after I could walk. Oh, dear. And he had to help me into the anchor. Mm. On the right here. Right up here is where I first touched him, Eric, right here on the floor. Right <laughs> the Philharmonic Pub, frequented by John many times, and I'm sure the others as well. Uh, <laughs> and then we've got the, the Philharmonic Hall on the right here, which is now being extended. Uh, the Beatles never played there, but they used to go to prize giving sessions, and of course, Paul was the only one to get a prize at school. Um, Ringo didn't go to school prize givings here because he was in a lower grade school, but the, the high schools all have their prize giving ceremonies in the Philharmonic Hall. And it was for the 150th anniversary of the Philharmonic Society that the Oratorio was commissioned last year. But of course. Oh, yes, I was there on the first night, yes. Where did you sit? Um, I wasn't. You were up at the front, were you? Yes, no, I was. Um, um, oh, about two thirds of the way back. It's, Mm. Our 25 was the best we could get in. Ringo was a patient uh, for one year, from the age of six. And he was in another part of that hospital for two years from the age of 13. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't seem to have done him too much harm. Well, yes. Uh, he's in Atlanta uh, yesterday, Eric. He's uh, performing oh. in Liverpool on the 6th of July, the night before his birthday. That'll be nice to go to. Mm. I won't be here then. Mm. Now, have you seen uh, Brian Epstein's? Uh, had in town, 36 Fortin Street, which he loaned to John and Cynthia when they got married. If you think about the date of their marriage, August 62, it was just about six weeks before Love Me Do came out. Yet they had no money, nowhere to live, so they had to borrow Brian Epstein's apartment. It's, um, I, don't know what, I don't know which route Sir Elizabeth took you on, where she... No. It mostly passed that. Yes. I yeah. told her that I wasn't really interested. Yes. So did you go out to Western Avenue, did you? We went to 
whole thing right there. Uh, yes, yeah, all. all of the houses. Oh, you did it. That's right. Yes, yes, she comes from uh, from over there, yes. Yes. Well, I'll drive down by the crack where they used to go drinking when they were students at the college and art college and institute around here. We're coming back onto Hope Street, which links the two cathedrals. Get a nice view of the Roman Catholic to the right. Mm. Huge. Yeah, yes. And to be there that first night was a special thing. It was a great All evening, wasn't it? Family, yes. Aunts and uncles and cousins and mm. children running about. Mm. Oh, Mm. The crack on the right where uh, John, Paul and George used to go drinking when they were students just around the corner. Uh, John's lot at the art college always refused to go back to college of an afternoon. So one of the tutors, Arthur Ballard, used to say, well, if you can't beat them, you might as well join them. And he used to come and give some of his lectures in the, in the back room of the crack, which is the sloped roof just at the back there. It's still a place where musicians and the poets of Liverpool gather, people from the Philharmonic Orchestra. New housing around here, which actually is sheltered accommodation for some of our Chinese community. And then just around the corner, we've got the, the Institute and the Art College. Oh. You want to get out for do some here? Yes. Mm. And somebody said that uh, I have a good time. It's really an exciting place for us to meet after all the correspondence. Like her pictures, and she won't get in the dark. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't like it. I, I noticed that on the last video. You have to sneak a picture of Jane. There she is. Those are copies. That'll be a new See the British Bulldog? Isn't that cute? It's my second time to buy this shirt. The first one I lost. Nearly as good as George Bulldog. Yeah, not quite as good, maybe. Woo! The Liverpool Institute, where Paul attended from the age of 11 and followed in the next school year by George. Paul worked hard, passed a few exams and stayed on till he was 18. George left as soon as he could, bit of a rebel at school, didn't pass any exams, used to wear a yellow waistcoat under his school blazer and winkle picker shoes, very pointed shoes. They're all different ages, as you know. Uh, John came to the art college when he was nearly 17. So he was here at the same time as Paul and George were next door. So they used to practice in the basement of the art college. At the art college, John met Cynthia, first wife, Stuart Sutcliffe, early Beatle, and Bill Harry, who's given us so many books about the Beatles. Uh, the institute has been closed for a few years, but it is going to be converted to a school of performing arts, and Paul is very, very much behind that, and followed by the others now, because through Apple, Paul, uh, sorry, George, John, well, Yoko, and Ringo have um, given money to, uh, to the Bob foundation. Recently gave half that $170, That's right, that he got from Swedish, uh, the Swedish awards, yes. Oh, but he's I also given... Mm, mm. Mm. Well, I suppose it was just the, um, the thing that was already rolling, wasn't it? That it is a monetary uh, uh, award that he just happens to have won uh, this, uh, this year. As if he needs it. Mm. Well, quite. 700 but million? He, but he's given half of it to here and half of it to the local hospital, which is uh, very much... Yes. Yes, yes, he's rolling in it. But we look forward to this being open and it'll give a lot of opportunities to... Uh, to people to be creative. Is Paul still saying he's going to teach? I'm going to be first in the queue there. I'm going to beat you to that, Jane. <laughs> any, um, any announcement of any uh, anything going on for his birthday? Where he's going to be or anything? I haven't seen anything, no. I think now, there's Jane a big... Um, oh, is it not open? Let's just... Uh,
You might get a can in here, um, Jane. If not, we'll stop. Uh, Shop here. Now next we have the Anglican Cathedral and also to the far left is Gambia Terrace which is where John lived uh, when he was a student at the Art College behind us. That's right, yes, and, uh, and of course Paul used to lay on the gravestones in the um, graveyard behind the cathedral when he was sagging off school. They skipped out quite a bit, yes. wrote songs. Sorry. It's uh, the, the snack bar is open from um, ten o'clock till half four. Are you wanting something? I no. Right opposite this next lamp post on the left, uh, where John shared the apartment with uh, Jeff, um, Mohammed, Rod Murray, and Stuart Sutcliffe. Very big rooms, very little furniture. I'll just move along because I'm blocking the traffic here. And John said to have slept in a coffin lined in black silk. That's just like John, isn't it? Yeah, it's a... <laughs> that to me is just John Lennon. And they had a very good view of the Anglican Cathedral, the largest Anglican Cathedral in the world, the fourth largest cathedral in the world, built between 1904 and 1978. So it's very new. Uh, Beatle Connections. Paul auditioned for the choir here. They turned him down. Said his voice wasn't strong enough. <laughs> was in the local <laughs> was in the local church choir. St Barnabas at Penny Lane, which we'll pass in a while. And but not good enough for here. But he got his own back on the cathedral last year because it's where we had the oratorio, which I think you know all about, uh, with the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra choir. Yes, yes, very good. It's the, it's the third oldest orchestra in the world. And they've got great uh, abilities. They've been performing down the eastern seaboard of America this spring. We've got reports of that. Yes, it was a business promotion tour. Uh, yes, do. Yes, yes, surely. Yes, yes. Fun, fun. That's the first time I've had a Do you want, so, do you want something, Jay? Because we can stop and get you something. Yes. The cars were going to be on that side That's and they were right. on this You warned me about that before I came and that helped a lot. On the organ with its 9,704 pipes. Uh, the largest organ in any church in the world. Did you hear that um, playing at all last year? Oh, it's a great sound, great sound. Mm. Um, but to hear it full blast is, is superb. Services there tomorrow. You're in Liverpool tomorrow, are you? Yeah. Uh, yes. I'm gonna be at their mercy. Mm -hmm. they, they'll, they'll tell me what we're doing. <laughs> what day is today? Saturday. Is the beach shop open tomorrow? No. What time are they closed? Today, um, half past five. Oh, wow. We'll just have to go there right away and get it over with. I'll probably spend well, 50 pounds. We'll take a visa? Yes. We've got to go. I know, I want to just go in there and get one of everything that I need. So you want me to do the basic tour and then you'll be back? For, do the uh, basic tour and, um, do, you know... And then you'll be, well, you'll be well back. And you've got to go, you've got to do Beatles story as well. Have you done that? I'd love to. Mm. Yes. Um, I really want to see Memlo Avenue and Strawberry Fields and all the things we missed on the last shot. Yes. yes. And this is better in a car, that darn tour bus. It's just kind of a hassle. But it's nice to do it twice. Mm. Might as well do it ten times. <laughs> we'll run out yeah, of pounds, though. We're going out into the suburbs now. This district is Toxteth, where we had rioting 11 years ago, uh, but where the Beatles performed their very first known gig. Did you hear about our riots? Yes, yes. Mm. Wherever they are, it's uh, sad business, isn't it? Is that over the book, the uh, soccer stadium? Is that what you're talking about? No, no, no. Yeah, did um, have a riot over there? No, we had uh, the disaster with the um, the Hillsborough disaster when 95 of our football supporters were crushed to death at a max. Yes, it wasn't actually in Liverpool, but it was Liverpool was playing at Sheffield in Yorkshire. 
Here's Rosebury Street on the left. Uh, new property down on one side now, but the next street uh, I'll still pause by because that's like it used to be in 57 when the Beatles performed their very first known gig, performing on the back of a lorry as the quarrymen, the lorry, a flatback, coal wagon. And Liverpool in 1957 was celebrating the 750th anniversary of its foundation. So the Beatles' very first gig, Rosebury Street, August 57. But it used to look like this next street, Haverley Street. Let's pause so you can see Haverley Street. It used to look like this street on the left. This area where we had the riots, it's poor housing, a very multiracial area. Over, they say 140 different nationalities live in the one square mile of Toxton. Churches of 61 denominations. It was a long, hot summer, very high unemployment. It all just bubbled over and there was rioting here in, in 1981. I think we've gone on to worse in back sense, but... <laughs> Um, last year when we had the Gulf and the recession, I did very well actually. Um, this year it's, it seems to be falling at the moment actually. It's, um, well, we're making up for it. You're, You're making up for it, yes. You ever heard of Birnbaum? He does a book. Yes, Birnbaum. yes. Like, Listen, last year his, his book didn't mention the Beatles but one time. This year everything he has in there about Liverpool is the Beatles. Mm. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, the whole section of... I haven't looked at it. Really? Oh, good. Good. Oh, well, that'll be good. Um, uh, I haven't actually seen seen it this year, in fact. I don't know. Well, quite. Yes, it's ridiculous. Uh, we're coming into the district of the Dingle, which is Ringo's area. Uh, Ringo lived in two houses in Liverpool, very close together. You see them both. Sadly, one's rather derelict at the moment. Put some music on, sorry. Do my job properly. You're doing just fine, Corey. We're lucky to have you. Oh, isn't he, isn't he kind? Yeah. Oh, I like it. Getting around me now, you see, he harassed me to death the other night, didn't you, dear? Well, I was just so excited, Hillary. I, didn't... I know you were. Ringo's little area. Because you turned on the radio and there's Ringo singing. Oh, yes, I've, I've got a tape made up for the tour. Yes, yes, sorry. I was just... uh, Ringo's um, since primary, so junior school here, for, up to the age of 11, since Silas on the right here. Um, when he wasn't in hospital, because of course he missed so much schooling. He was always sick. That's right. And it was actually whilst he was in hospital that he actually got to the drums because he was in the ward band of the hospital over at Heswell, near McCartney's uh, current home, the home he has over there. Um, Heswell Hospital, it's been pulled down now. Uh, but um, that's city. where he, he got in the ward band. He was born in Madryn Street, which we'll, we'll drive down in a moment. At the age of six, he moved to Admiral Grove here on the left, and he lived in the house that's painted white with the light upstairs, number 10. This is what we said, call a two up, two down. Two rooms really? downstairs, two rooms upstairs, outside to it. Yes. Imagine the fans crowding around here when the Beatles were famous. It was the fans that made Ringo's mother and stepfather move from here because they got no books. The fans were sitting on the back wall when they went to the outside. The pub on the left is on the cover of Ringo's solo record, Sentimental Gear. Which, um, which shot? Which... The 4th, 7th of July, 1940. And down here he lived in, was born and lived in a three-up, three-down house. 
but his father left home when Ringo was three. Uh, a couple of years later, his mother actually exchanged houses with a friend. The friend had a smaller house, but a bigger family, so it suited them both. Now, sadly, his house is all boarded up. It's a nice feature on this lady's house. Can I point to your house, my dear? With you, with the um, it says it actually says Beatles in the pointing, in the cement work between the bricks. You see the oh, lower for window. Sake. Yes. Oh, Have you got oh, above the lower? Yeah. Above the lower window, Jim. There's a, a painted oh, yeah. bricks. Oh, yeah. Then two oh, levels, yeah. and then in the next two levels of bricks, it says Beatles. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. He's a good American supporter with his stars and stripes on there. So that's one of the places he lived? No, no. Ringo lived here, was born and lived at number nine. This house, number ten, is where uh, his mother's friend, um, Mrs. Elsa McGuire, lived. Sorry, Mrs. McGuire. She was Elsa. Stunky. Ringo would love my love. Back off Boogaloo. And the mothers were friends here. The daughter of number ten used to look after Ringo when he was a youngster. And she, in fact, the daughter, in fact, was a beautiful girl at the same time. So and it uh, was the daughter of number 10 who in fact introdu uh, introduced him to the drums and she is godmother to Zach, his eldest. I just know that Zach is having a fall on me too, don't you know? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, like reliving his, uh, yeah, so his life again I think through it, isn't it? Mm, yes. It's yes. exciting. Yes. Yes, uh, yes I think he's you know, uh, he's got a super sense of humour, Ringo, hasn't he? Yes. Yes. Yeah. A bit put on, but a great sense of humour. He had an aunt living in the street at number 45, which is this one just on the left here. And then his grandparents, the Starkey grandparents, lived at number 59, which is the last house on the left. In those days, families lived close together. That's good. My family lived. I live real close to my family. Do you? Oh, <laughs> very close. Huh? Yeah. Some mama's boys. Got a couple wonderful sons here. Yep. Mama and Daddy. I feel like I know your sons just from what you've written, you know. Is one of them called Paul? Oh, no. no. But I guarantee you one thing. I was stupid not to name him. This is James. I should have named the child that you call. Yes. If I had one now, I would. Next life. Too bad I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> You're in your prime, Jane. Ask Jim. He'll tell you. I would have a baby. <laughs> I have to run around the world chasing Tom McCartney. How am I going to do that with a baby up my head? It takes us too long to get out of the grove. That's another reason. Once you get your freedom again, it yeah, see, must be lovely. Baby, mm. My youngest is uh, only 17, so not completely free yet. The youngest, the eldest, yeah. Yes. Cracker Box yeah. Palace? Yes. The um, park on the right here is Prince's Park, Liverpool's oldest park. Now, there is a Beatle connection here. This was designed by Paxton who designed another park on the other side of the river at Birkenhead. Now, Birkenhead Park, the design of that was taken and enlarged and used for the design of New York Central Park, which I'm sure you've all seen, have you? Where there's the strawberry field uh, patch as well. Central Park opposite the Dakota buildings. Yeah, I want to go there to, to uh, Menlo. Mm. We, we missed there, it. Eric, we, went to see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we missed it on the last couple of days ago. Mm. We took a tour and they told us the same thing you just told us about that park. Yes. When we went back into the park. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah oh, was like a Beatle tour, was it? No. no. A tour. Uh, yes. Oh. Yes, my sister was driving around in a taxi and the taxi uh, driver mentioned it. Um, and several people have told that, you know, said that to me. We're coming into Sefton Park after the next set of traffic lights, Liverpool's largest park. And it was in Sefton Park that John's parents first met. Uh, imagine his father, Freddie Lennon, walking around the park with a friend. His friend was teaching Freddie how to pick up girls. Along came Julia, John's future mother. Freddie tried to pick her up. He wasn't successful at first uh, because he was wearing a hat. 
uh, Julia didn't approve. But when he took his hat off and threw it into the lake in the park, she was quite amused. So they started talking. They went out together for 10 years before they got married. Uh, two years after they were married, John was born. But less than two years after that, Freddie had left his ship in America and was only heard of once more before John became famous. Sefton Park. Musical, tell us where we're going. Sorry, I've got a bit of a blip in this tape, but, you know. John stuff like in my life is one of my favorites too. But, um, but I mean, it just seems like some of the real classics, Hey Jude and Get Back and Penny Lane and stuff. It seems like Paul really had it, really had it together. It's very uh, melodic and he's got some nice, nice words as well. Great. Yes, ma'am. Great. I'd love to see it. Or maybe you could just sign me a copy of it. Even better. There's a birthday card for everybody to sign uh, in Beatles Story that's going off to Paul. Yes. Great. The sign is on this next corner on the left. Painted oh, because. Wait. Yeah, I'll let you out actually. Okay. Yeah. It's a bit awkward to find corner to stop on. This is where I lost my tape went out last time. The little red button? Yeah, you got it. Okay. Pretty late. We're doing video of Penny doing video. Yeah, we are. Off air. On Penny Lane. Okay. Yeah, I like Hillary. It's pretty neat, huh? Very knowledgeable. Very. I'm sure okay, glad that you guys I want have. I'm going to take a picture of just me. Okay. Nothing. I'm sure personal. glad that you guys have. Uh, no, I understand. Um, I'm glad that you guys. Okay. Great. Okay. We stayed, we stayed as next door neighbors, and that tells everything. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. This is Paul again. <laughs> This is Paul again. Yes. Maybe you ought to crank the Penny Lane uh, tape again. We've got the playing fields of Liverpool College here, uh, which is where Brian Epstein attended. Uh, only for oh, they're, 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 they're playing cricket now, in very English cricket. Uh, the school is just a bit further over. Uh, Brian got expelled for drawing naughty pictures in the back of his school exercise book. He only lasted one year at that well, school. Yes, they're always uh, I think all tired of the same fish. Now bowl are outside too. That's, I like to watch that and have it white and they bowl. Yes, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's very popular bowling, green crown bowling, yes. So this is Penny Lane. And John and uh, George would come down here and turn off along Dovedale Road to go to Dovedale Road primary junior school up to the age of 11. That's down the next road to the right. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, we can get a good shot You've got the, um, the Dovedale Towers here, which used to be the church hall, uh, where, um, uh, sorry, the church hall of St Barnabas Church, the church at the end, where Paul was in the choir. So Paul knew Dovedale Towers here very well. And in fact, they all played gigs there, gigs which were actually run by um, actor comedian Derek Nimmo. In fact, he lived in the side streets here. 
But this is Dovedale Towers. You know what you need to buy you? Uh, a car without a top. <laughs> like uh, the weather's not usually like this. <laughs> is it? It can be yeah. very, very mixed. We nearly froze last year. We brought all kinds of warm clothes, and I yes. mean, it was cold last year. Oh, yeah, this, uh, there's no accounting for it. Yes, it was. Oh, the, the day of the oratory, it was nice. It was nice in the evening, but uh, um, it was a lovely day then. The day before the oratory, or that night. We waited yes. on hall for two mm. hours. Now, this is cold as mm. I've ever been in my life. Really? Here it is. This mm. is what I'm talking about. Now, Penny, I'll oh, stop the other side of the junction. But Penny Lane finishes here, and we've got Penny Lane Records, Penny Lane Wine Bar. And then the lane is finished. But all the things that are mentioned in the song are beyond the junction. Arthur. Yes, Sergeant Pepper's just ahead right here. That used to be the bus shelter, the shelter in the middle of the roundabout. Uh, I'll, I'll stop and you can get on. Hornby Housing Group on the left used to be a bank. Penny Lane Sage Surgery on the left here. When you came last year, that was a Barclays bank. Yeah, it sure was. Mm. But we like to think they wrote about the TSB, the Trustee Savings Bank, over on the far right-hand corner. The fire station is about a mile away, but the firemen would come to the junction. They would go to the barber shop, which is uh, just beyond the shop with the canopy. Uh, still showing, in fact, I'll park by that one. Uh, the barber showing photographs of the Beatles today. Now, until they were six years old, John and George lived in the area just ahead of us. And then they moved out way out to the right where they Okay, I see. Great. I wonder if they got any special Beatles stuff over there. Yes, ma'am? I wish we were walking. 